Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another set of examples of how to multiply fractions together. These may be a little bit more challenging, so let's take it one step at a time. Taking a look at our first one, before we multiply everything out, maybe we can simplify some things. I notice we have a 10 here and a 40 there. They both end up in a zero, so we can divide those by, by 10. And we have a 28 and a 21. It looks like those are multiples of seven. And then we have a 3 here and a 15, so those are both divisible by 3, so that's kind of the way we're thinking here. So let's start by simplifying those. So we can divide the 10 and the 40 by 10 simply by getting rid of the 0. So we get rid of that 0 and get rid of that 0, so that simplifies things pretty good. Then here we have a 21 and 28. We can divide 21 by 7, and that gives us 3. We can divide 28 by 4 and by 7, and that gives us a 4. And then notice we have a 3 and a, 30, a 15 here, but we also have a 3 here and a 3 there. So right away we can make that a little bit easier. So divide this 3 by 3, we get a 1. We divide this 3 by 3, we get a 1 there. And then take a look here, we have a 1, a 15, and a 1, a 4, and a 4. So I don't think we can simplify it anymore. We can now simply multiply all the remaining numerators. 4 times 4, which is 16, divided by... 1 times 15 times 1, which is 15, and that looks like is our final answer for that one, the most reduced answer we can get. Now let's take a look at our second example. Uh, we have a 270 and a 280. I also have a 28 here and a 7, if I ignore that 0 for a moment. Hmm, so maybe we can do something there, because 7 and 28 are both divisible by 7. But first, let's go ahead and get rid of this 0 and this 0. We're going to divide this by 10, divide that by 10. That means we're going to get rid of these two zeros. And now we have a 7 and a 28. So 7 divided by 7, that's equal to 1. And 28 divided by 7 is equal to 4. Now here we have a 27 and a 35. But I don't think we can simplify that because this is divisible by 3. But this is not because 3 plus 5 is 8. So it looks like that's as much as we can reduce that one. And what we have left is 1 times 27 for the numerator. And we have 4 times 35, which is 140 for the denominator. And that's as simple as we can make that. Now on the third one here, notice we multiply two fractions times 20. Basically, we can write this as 20. Whoa, there goes my pen. Uh, 20 divided by 1, right? So now we can turn it into a fraction. So now we can look at all the numerators and all the denominators. We have a 20 and a 50. That looks like we can simplify that. So divide this by a 10. So divide that by 10, we get a 2. Divide this by 10, we get a 5. We have a 4 and a 12. Those are both divisible by 4. So we can go ahead, divide the numerator by 4, we get 1. Divide the denominator by 4, we get 3. And now we have a 33 and a 3. Those are both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 33 divided by 3 gives us 11. And now I think we have it as simple as we can make it. So in the numerator, we end up with 1 times 11 times 2, which is 22, divided by 1 times 5 times 1, which is 5 in the denominator. All right. Let's take a look at our next one. Notice we have 20, we have 15. We have a 6 and an 18, we have an 18 and a 36, so there's all kinds of combinations where we can seemingly simplify this. So first of all, I know that 2 times 18 gives me 36, so I can divide this 18 and this 36 by 2. So 18 divided by 18 is 1, 36 divided by 18 gives me 2. Then I have a 5 and a 20, so what I could do here is I can divide the 5 and the 20 both by 5, so 5 divided by 5 is 1, 20 divided by 5 is 4. And let's see what else do we have. Notice we have a 15 and a 6, they're both divisible by 3, because 1 plus 5 is 6, that's divisible by 3, so 15 divided by 3 gives me 5, and 6 divided by 3 gives me a 2. And now I think I have it about as simple as we can make it. So we have 1 times 1 times 5 in the numerator, so that gives us a 5 for the numerator, and in the denominator, we have 4 times 2 times 2. That's basically 4 times 4, or 16 for the denominator. 
All right, and that's how we work these problems. Now, even with something like this that at first seems a little scary because the numbers are so big, but right away I see a 4 with two zeros and a 9 with two zeros, so we know that we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 100, so 900 becomes 9 and 400 becomes 4 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, 100. And then right away we see 1 zero here and 1 zero there, so there we can divide the numerator by 10, that gives us 342, and we can then divide the denominator by 10, that gives us 120. And then we have a 4 and 120. Notice that when we divide by 4, all we have to do is look at the last two numbers. 20 is divisible by 4, therefore 120 must be divisible by 4, which means we can divide this 4 by 4, we get 1. We can divide 120 by 4, and we get 30, because 30 times 4 is 120. Now, let's see here, we have a 9, a 30, and we have a 342. So I'm going to check to see if 342 is divisible by 3. I add these together, I get 3 plus 4 plus 2. Well, that adds up to 9, which means that 342 is divisible by 9, and 9 is divisible by 9. So I can make this easier for myself. I divide the 9 by 9, I get 1. I divide the 342 by 9, and I get, hmm, wait a minute. That's kind of hard to do, so let's do it quickly on the side. 342 divided by 9. 9 goes in 34. Well, that looks like about 3 times. 3 times 9 is 27. Oop, where are we? I got the wrong line here. So I've got to put the line over here. 9 goes in 34 3 times. 3 times 9 is 27. Subtract from that, it gets 7. Drop the 2. 9 goes in 72. Well, that means 8 times. 8 times 9 is 72. The remainder is 0. So if I divide 342 by 9, I get 38. Still not quite done, because 38 is an even number, and so is 30, which means I can divide both by 2. 38 divided by 2 is 19. 30 divided by 2 is 15. And finally, I'm ready to multiply. 19 times 1 gives me 19 for the numerator. 15 times 1 gives me 15 for the denominator. And that's the most reduced form of that fraction. All right, let's try the next one. Notice we have a lot of big numbers, but lots of zeros. Zeros are always good when they come at the end. And uh, let's see here, we have two zeros here and two zeros there. So I can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 100, which gives me a 2 and a 7. Here, I only have one zero in the denominator, but I have two zeros there and two zeros there. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce these two by dividing the denominator and the denominator by 100. So 300 divided by 100, it gives me 3. And 1600 divided by 100 gives me 16. And here I have one zero there and one zero there. So 180 divided by 10 gives me 18. And 140 divided by 10 gives me 14. Still not quite done. I have a 3 and an 18. So they're both divisible by 3, which means if I divide 3 by 3, I get 1. 18 divided by 3, I get a 6. Still not quite done. I have a 14 here and a 16. They're both even. However, I see a 14 and a 7. 7 goes into 14 exactly two times, which means I can divide this 7 by 7, I get 1. This 14 divided by 7 gives me a 2. Now I have a 16 and a 2. They're both even, which means I can divide this 16 by 2 to give me an 8, and this 2 by 2 to give me a 1. I can continue that. I can divide this 8 by 2 to give me a 4. I can divide this 2 by 2 to give me a 1. I have nothing but 1's in the numerator, so I'm done reducing. doesn't matter what I have in the denominator. So 1 times 1 times 1, that gives me 1 in the numerator. And 4 times 6 in the denominator gives me a 24, 1 over 24. All right, now let's take a look at the last one here. Hmm. I see a 22. I can divide that by 11. I see a 132. Remember the rule. When the outside two numbers add up to the inside number, that means that number is divisible by 11. So both the 22 and the 132 is divisible by 11. I also see I have a 24 and a 36. 24 can be divided by 12 to give me 2. 36 is divisible by 12 to give me 3. So there's some good ideas. So first, let's take the dividing by 11. So 22 divided by 11 is 2. 132 divided by 11 is 12. All right. 
Then 24 divided by, let's use a different color here, 24 divided by 12 gives me 2, 36 divided by 12 gives me 3. 3 and 48, 48 is divisible by 3, so I'm going to make that number a little smaller. So what I can do here is I can divide the 3 by 3, they give me 1, 48 divided by 3 gives me 16. Then I can see here that this 2 and this 2 can cancel. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Finally, I have a 56 here, which is even. I have two even numbers up there, so I can continue to simplify even more. Let's see here. 56 divided by 2 gives me 28. 12 divided by 2 gives me a 6. I can continue. 28 divided by 2 gives me 14. 6 divided by 2 gives me a 3. 14 can be divided by 2. So 14 divided by 2 gives me a 7, and 16 divided by 2 gives me an 8. And now since in the denominator I have two 1s and a 7, which is a prime number, and there's no 7s in the numerator, I'm about as close to finishing this problem as possible. Now we've got to be careful here that this 4 here doesn't belong to the number down below, so I put a line there to make sure that we don't get confused. And so for the numerator I have a 1 times 8 times 3, which is 24, divided by 1 times 1 times 7, which is a 7 in the denominator, and 7 does not go into 24 evenly, so we're done. That's the most reduced form. So here's some very good examples of how to reduce fractions before we multiply them. That makes the job a whole lot easier, and that's how it's done.